original video pitting the R7-260X against the GTX 750 Ti has proved to be quite popular. So seeing as the actual planned video for today had to be delayed a little bit, we thought we could take this chance to revisit these graphics cards and see how they stack up today in newer games. Of course, between now and then, more cards have come out, notably on the AMD side, meaning that today, right now in the UK, the R7-260X is around £15 cheaper than the cheapest 750 Ti, with the R7-265 and even the R9-270 being perilously close to the 750 Ti on price and outperforming it by a pretty handy margin. But today it's round two for the 260X and the 750 Ti. Let's get into it. Both of these cards have only two gigabytes of VRAM and a 128-bit memory bus, so ultra settings for the latest super amazing graphics games are pretty much ruled out here. All tests were done at 1080p at stock speeds for fairness sake, as not all cards will get the same overclock. I also want to make it plain from the outset that if we did overclock this particular 750 Ti, something you can see in the updated benchmark video from a few months ago if you click here, then the following results would be very different. Keep that in mind before you write that comment. Okay, so let's start with Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. At high settings using the CAN benchmark, surprisingly the 260X edges the 750 Ti, with an average of 42 frames per second to 39. I say surprisingly because Shadow of Mordor is an Nvidia optimized game, so you'd expect it to perform better than an AMD card. Either way, both are playable at the highest settings. Next we have Dragon Age Inquisition. Again we use the included canned benchmark and as this game uses Mantle, we would assume that this would be a win for the AMD card. But no actually, totally opposite. At high settings the 750 Ti averaged 34.5 frames per second with the 260X only managing a paltry 21. And strangely, when we switched to DirectX 11 it managed 24. Up next is Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth. While this is a mantle game, there is a bug that wouldn't let me actually use it, so these results are DirectX only, and once again the canned benchmark was used. At medium settings, the 260X averaged 59 frames per second, with the 750 Ti only able to manage 51. Both perfectly playable though, of course. Now Far Cry 4, another Nvidia optimized game. The 260X managed 47 frames per second, with the 750 Ti only able to manage 42. I think we can see a pattern emerging here. At this point I'd like to point out this is all down to the underclock standard VRAM frequency with the 750 time which is 5400 MHz. If overclocked up to 6000 MHz it makes it much more competitive. But as this is a stock test and as the 750 Ti is likely to be using small form factor systems with limited cooling we won't be doing that today. Next is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. At the recommended settings, which are something like medium settings, the 260X averages 85 frames per second, with the 750 Ti managing 71. Both well above 60 and easily playable. So Assassin's Creed Unity. Now Ubisoft have released a few patches, it's almost playable. Almost. The 260X manages 36 frames per second, but dropping to 26 at times, and the 750 Ti manages 32, dropping to 20 at its lowest point, and that is at the lowest settings. So neither of these GPUs are capable of running this game to a satisfactory level at stock speeds. Finally, we have Heroes of the Storm from Blizzard. This is still in beta testing, so these numbers will very likely change upwards, but as I've been playing it a little, I thought I'd include it anyway. Also, as an arty style MOBA, it shares lots in common with Dota and League of Legends in terms of how much GPU power you need to run it. The 260X at ultra settings did 83 frames per second average, with the 750 Ti averaging 57. So, if you are into the whole MOBA thing, then either of these will run at ultra settings at 1080p easily. So, there we go. What we can conclude from this is that out of the box, the R7-260X right now, at this very moment, is better than a GTX 750Ti at stock speeds in the latest games. And for the third time, if you do overclock the 750Ti, it will gain a pretty large amount of FPS across the board of games. While the 260X isn't so great at overclocking, it does cost less, and with new AMD cards on the way, it will likely drop even further in price as retailers clear their stock. Of course, if you do have enough money for this particular 750 Ti, it's not a bad buy still. It's very stable even when overclocked and has the same power consumption and quietness still. However, for that money, I would recommend going for an R7 265 or an R7 270, as the price to performance for these cards is pretty insane. And again, with new AMD cards on the horizon, the older cards will hopefully be available at bargain prices. Okay, that's all for today. 
Thank you guys for watching, liking, maybe sharing, and commenting. Leave me a comment if you have something you just have to say. I've tried super hard to be as neutral as possible, but I'm sure someone's going to pick holes. Uh, check out our affiliate links in the video description for Amazon if maybe you want to buy a 2CX or 70 Die, maybe, or something else. Also, Tour Guide if you're interested in having some privacy online, not just a VPN, but also private email and anonymous proxy service for BitTorrent. Oh, by the way, if you're a regular viewer, the Guide TV videos are taking a break for a while. Basically, I don't have the time to make them each week, along with the Monday video too, as I've got a full-time job. Previously, we've been working through a backlog of already shot videos that were in editing, and now we've caught up, so the Guide videos will probably show up every other week or so, maybe. Thank you again for watching, and of course, don't forget to subscribe for more weekly videos. We'll see you in the next one.